They despised his name and they didn't even know it. You and I do the same. Whenever anything fills our mind more than God. It's all about him. It's all about him. Because you see, the problem today in, in America and in our churches is not a lack of zeal for missions. The problem is much greater. A lack of zeal for God and for the glory of God. If you are zealous for the things of God, if you realize what has been done, the purchase that's been made for you, in order to save you from your sin and the wrath of God, if you realize the greatness of the one who sits upon the throne who created the earth and one day will bring it to an end, if you realize that absolutely everything in this temporal sphere is dust and rot, then you will begin to have a zeal for God. And when you have a zeal for God, you'll have a zeal for missions. I don't need to be a prophet or the son of a prophet to know what your God is. I only have to watch your life. When Jesus Christ is just something you do at the beginning of the week, but yet throughout your life you're a practical atheist, I know who your God is. And it is not the one who is the one true God. When you have just enough Christianity to make you moral and comfortable in the South, I know who your God is. If I could look into your mind and see what occupies your mind, I will know what your God is. Everything you have, even if you are here today and you are the vilest and most wicked God-hating man on the planet, if there is any good whatsoever in your life, it comes from the very one you hate. All the things that mean so much to you, Only tell everyone one thing, O oh, you priests who have been called to know him, how you despise his name. I'm not saying this to hurt you. I'm saying it because it's true. Were you as excited about this missions conference as you were the football game yesterday? We would never say the Lord's not number one. We would never say that this or that is more important than God. We would never say that. He says you say it, not with your mouth, but with your life. What does he demand from us? Everything. I know about these silly little evangelists that say, give me your hand and give Jesus your heart. I know about these silly little preachers that say, come forward and pray this prayer, it only take five minutes. They're lying to you. This is what it'll cost you. Your life. Your life. Jesus promises you two things. A cross to die on and eternal life. He's everything. He's everything. Or he's nothing. The saddest place on the earth is the biblical south, where everyone has just enough of religion to send them straight to hell, to soothe their religious conscience and not know that they're despising the Lord and that they have so many idols in their life that the Lord is not even first or second or third or fourth. It is not giving unto the Lord everything everything what would you have me to do O oh Lord teach me your ways O oh Lord who do I have in heaven but thee who do I have on earth but thee what am I but a speck of dust breathing holy breath if indeed you have converted me so difficult is our salvation that only God can make it possible Do you think he's a flu shot? I could talk to most Southern Baptists and talk to them about salvation. They'd say, don't worry about me. I done did that. 
You done did what? Well, I took care of that a long time ago. If you're not taking care of it today, you didn't take care of it a long time ago. The evidence that you repented unto salvation one time ago, a long time ago, is you are still repenting today and growing in repentance. The evidence that you truly believed unto salvation many years ago is that you're still believing today and even more. And the evidence that He changed your life is that He's still doing it. If He's not still doing it, He didn't do it to start off with. Deal with the fact that you are being confronted with a gospel that demands everything from you. That you're being confronted with who God is. He doesn't share. He takes everything. But if your heart has truly been regenerate and you're just not a lost carnal church member, if your heart has truly been regenerate, you'll say, Amen. Let Him take it over. He's worthy. worthy. Christian, a true one, never has a problem with this. To God alone be the glory. Since there's no longer the power of the Holy Spirit in our ministries, in our churches, and in our missionary activity, we have to do all sorts of professional things to keep a dead corpse moving. It is better to be a secularist. It is better to be an atheist. To claim nothing of God and from God. Than to claim God and enter into that claim half-heartedly. I were that you were cold or you were hot. But because you are neither cold nor hot, but lukewarm, I will spit you out of my mouth. Most people are alive only because air is free. They do nothing with their lives. And you say, well, I've done much. But the much that you've done, how much of it is eternal? How much of it will burn up in the fire? He said, Brother Paul, but I've never been able to offer just the, out of a pure heart. I've always battled with sin. I've always struggled. I want to be more. Even this morning when I was worshiping, I was struggling with thoughts that, that were deviant, that were not about God. And it was so difficult to worship. Do you mean God does not receive anything from me? From you, He receives much. Because by your own word, you're acknowledging Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. With those types of words and with the breaking of your heart, you're showing that you truly belong to Him, that you want to be more for Him. But those of you who sat out there cold as a stone and had no problem with it, you're the ones that should be afraid. Oh, why are we here? Why do we breathe? Why does that heart of ours beat if not for Him and the advancement of His kingdom? 